Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the lounge on this Friday evening, September 4th, 2020. I bet you didn't expect to see me in a baseball hat. Yep, yeah, it's 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 the change of season. It's you're supposed to be relaxed. We're in the lounge, and I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna lounge it up. I'm gonna lounge it up with the hoodie, the hat. I just want you guys to relax tonight. That, that's where I'm coming from. We're going to relax because there's so much we got to talk about tonight, especially with what I've been talking about on the office. And I've been talking about this week on the porch and I've been talking about for the last five months. So a lot of you that have been with me since the beginning, you know that I started all these things in the pandemic and you know that I just started taping myself walking down the street with a lot of wind in the background and then for the lounge, I was just putting Christmas lights on my head and talking in tangents. And now we're here. We have the three the the three themes. We have the office, the porch, and the lounge. You don't ever know what's going to happen. I Two weeks ago, I showed up on somebody else's porch and did the porch. You just don't know. Um, so this week, I was doing the porch. And like I say, the lounge is a show that always books itself. And we were doing the show. And I see my friend Nora, who I've known for 20 years. She was the start of my whole career in the gallery world. And she just wanted to show her support and show, you know, put a little heart there. And of course, I had to make the whole webcast about her and put her on the spot and say, yeah, you're coming on the show on Friday. And she's been brave and she's here with us. And I know a lot of you are so excited. She has been the one that has taught me all my energy work that I used to do. I don't know if you guys know that, but I used to do energy work. It just got too much of me doing everything. I'm just, you know, I'm going to stick with my extra value meals, one, two, and three. I'm not getting into the Western burgers. I'm not getting into the crazy stuff that they bring at McDonald's. I'm just sticking with the mediumship medical intuition. And I have other people dealing with the energy work, the hands-on stuff, the acupuncture, the past life regression, the cards, all at all. I'll teach it. I'll do it. But I'm going to stick with what I know. And I'm not uh, getting into touching anybody anymore. But that's okay, because Nora doesn't even do that. She just holds her hands over people, and you could feel stuff going out of your body. It's great. It's it's insane. So she's the only one I really ever let do energy work on me. Her, her I don't know if you want to call it a shop. It's called a center. I think her healing center is called Pathways to Inner Healing, and it's in Moscow, Pennsylvania. It used to be in Jefferson Township, but it moved to Moscow, Pennsylvania. Not Moscow, Russia. There is a Moscow, Pennsylvania, believe it or not. It's way up there in the Pocono Mountains, if you go to the end of the turnpike on 476, the Northeast Extension, you will hit this whole valley of exciting energy and vortexes and mountains. And that's where Nora exists. She exists in the vortex. And not only that, she goes to Sedona like every year and gets more energy to just give out to people. I mean, it's like a, it's like Christmas day with her. You know, she comes back from Sedona and that's it. She's the lightning bolts go into her and then she gives it back to you. That's where we're at. So I haven't had energy work with her since the pandemic started. But before that, all of my transitions and the transformations were taking place. And I was like just purging energy and I didn't know what was going on with me. And she helped me to move a lot of that. But she's like, you need to come back, honey. You're not done. Well, the pandemic hit and I had to stop all that. But I have to get back to her. So um, like, you know, we were talking about how in the past five months you've had to learn your lessons. That means that everything that was putting you into the new consciousness, which we talked about, you had to go through certain internal transformations and lessons 
Um, and a lot of people hit a lot of endings, okay, with a lot of cycles they've been dealing with, trying to move through those cycles because there was nobody to face but yourself in this pandemic, right? So either you took the opportunity to do the growth work you needed to do, or you just, you know, kind of stagnated and didn't grow. And I talked about this, like I said, for a while that there was no middle energy levels anymore. You were either going to go to the higher energy level or people were going to the lower energy level. There were no middle levels of energy. And then we're getting to the point where not only is this universe elevating consciousness, but the other dimension, what we call heaven and the other levels on the other side, we're all actually transcending consciousness together. So that realm is shifting with us. And so they're trying to get us the people who are learning the, their lessons and raising consciousness, we're really important in moving that energy to a higher consciousness, move, moving the universe to a higher consciousness. And the other side is actually moving in that direction. Also, um, we have a little pe people here from YouTube. Hi, Polly B. It's been, a, it's been a while. CJ Weston will be on a, at another time. Uh, not tonight. He goes to bed early. So we got to, we got to keep him up and bring him on next week. Okay. But I'm glad you're here. Thank you, Carrie. I know you like my hat. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm, I'm going casual tonight, like I said. But we have, it, it's so important that, that Nora is here tonight because this is the point in the energy, Pisces full moon, okay? This is the point where we are existing in a hologram, meaning that we're starting a new life. The people that have learned their lessons, we're starting a new life. So a lot of you are starting new careers, new relationships, moving into new, completely new chapter, not even new chapters, just a new book in your life and you're letting go of the old you and the old life. But right now we haven't transitioned yet to where everything's integrated. So you're almost experiencing your old life and your new life at the same time. And your intuition is kind of confused. You're not like, where, which way do I go? I was talking to a lot of people over the past month about people leaving relationships and they're meeting other people on the same frequency who are also leaving relationships and they're getting together. So these are two different frequencies. And we have to make sure that we talk about this, whether you are leaving the old relation, like whether you're, let's say you're staying in your relationship or your marriage, you guys have shed your skin if you've done your work and you're leaving those old people behind and you're starting a new relationship together, even if you're with the same person or you're leaving a lower energy situation. And this could even be a job. And you're looking, it's like you're a new baby. You're trying to walk like a new baby and talk and, and do all these new things. All this new energy is coming, but you need to learn how to navigate this new consciousness. So the people that are there, we need to find out from Nora, how do we do this? How do we clear the past? How do we integrate the new? So we're going to talk about that. But before we get there, we are going to bring our lovely co-host for this week, September 4th, 2020. She does not disappoint with her tough love attitude. Every week, her background gets better. She adds new lanterns, and you just don't know what Elise is going to say. So let's welcome Elise Setalara, our medium of the month. And who knows? Who knows how long she'll stay here? Because you guys are loving it. Let's bring her on. Hey, everybody. Hello, Elise. Hey, Marissa. What's, What's going, going on? on? Oh, so you know the old old. So yeah, interesting. You're talking about the transition, especially with this pandemic and how everything's twisting hopefully for the better but we still got to remember what's really important so not letting your guard down and i think that relates into what you're talking about marriages disintegrating <laughs> or yeah. new relationships um you have to make sure that the baggage is gone like you have the work that you need to do um before you even get into it let's say you're in a relationship broke up during the pandemic thankfully that wasn't my case <laughs> <laughs> I know you're a lot just, of people. No, you're I breaking know. up with the spirits in your house. That's what you're breaking up with. Are you telling them to leave? No, they can stay. I'm used to them. Well, so, the guy, yeah, some of them got to go though. They're they're just they're just too much. What about the tree in your front in your front yard? Are you, is that leaving? The tree in the front yard or on the side? Yeah, on the oh, side yard. Same. Yeah, I have no, no control over that. Yeah, where I live. So, what did control. you what did you like release? Like. What kind of stuff were you releasing during the pandemic? Was it all internal stuff, internal changes? Oh, absolutely. It was well, yeah. it was out it was external changes. I lost my job. And then it related into my internal what I needed to do. Like I had to revamp myself, almost like a rebirth. 
of recreating like who is Elise, you know, exactly did that in my twenties. So I know what I want to be. Then I got married, had my baby. And then I, you get pushed in the background because of the baby. And then, you know, empty nester. Now my daughter's gone and, you know, finding out what exactly made me happy and what made me want to be um, me, you know, you get into certain compartments, relationships, work, you know, every day, you know, household items, like you do the same thing every day. You clean your refrigerator or you clean the stairs or you have yeah, a screw that. Day. Yeah. You know, so, um, the only thing I, that. no, not you at all. Cause I'm getting a reverb on my thing. Um, so <laughs> It's my life. So I just feel before anyone can go into a new relationship, because people are meeting people online during the pandemic, you know, they're doing their match, they're okay, Cupid, you know. Um, but what about the safety the in the pandemic? I want to talk about that. The what? Okay, so you're the safety in the pan pandemic. So people are meeting people online. They're telling me that they're quarantining and they're not like, you know, talking to people. Right. But then they're meeting up with these people and kissing them, making out with them, having sex with them. Who knows? Bring them like in the house. Through their masks? I don't know. What's going on? <laughs> I don't know how that would work. Honestly, listen, 56 years on this earth, I really don't know how you could be safe and date during the pandemic. You know? I guess you people know. think it's safe because it's you're meeting online, but then you eventually have to meet in person. You, like, you got to oh, go boy. somewhere. <laughs> Please take this this uh, COVID test before we even go out. <laughs> Well, I don't think you people know? care. It's like they're so they're I just snored it, by the way. Just, That's okay. I snort all the time. <laughs> all the time. So go no, on. It, it it kind of like it kind of rattles my butt a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like you're telling me about the pandemic. You're calling me for a session or a reading. You're like, oh yeah, not sure if I should let my kid go to school. But I just had Ronald over here last week who I met from uh down in California, he flew up here and uh, we're, he's staying with me for two weeks because he's got friends in the area. Well, what about yeah, Ronald? Where was it. he? Where was he? Where was he going? Do you even I know? No, I don't even know about Ronald. He's pretty, you know, is he married? Is he single? I don't know. You don't know. So what are you doing? So then don't even, don't even, don't even be safe. You might as not well. You know, I think, I especially during this year with everything that's gone on with, even adventuring out and looking for a new relationship, you got to work on yourself. I yeah. think that you have to do the, your own cleaning. We're talking about cleaning the house, cleaning shop. You got to clean yourself and get rid of your own baggage before you get into somebody else's baggage. Cause that's basically what you're running into. I don't care how, well, yeah. you, if you understand what I'm saying, I, I just yeah, feel like I do. Um, you know, you have to be a hundred percent before you can be 80% for the next person. I mean, well, you're Everything. taking, if, if you leave a relationship in the pandemic, let's say, because it, I mean, I, I live in a household. I'm a parent and I have, I have people here. Everybody's making me crazy. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? But you just got to get out for a walk. Like I do go down the street and put myself live on the air. That's what right. we do. But the thing is, is that I'm seeing a lot of endings for friendships, relationships, spouses, careers, but the people that are doing the work are ending it for the right reasons and going into the new energy. However, they're feeling so good. They think they're ready to just jump in with somebody else. They got to break and it. <laughs> that's, that's the thing. You're not, they're not finishing the transition um, that needs to happen. So the energy it's like, like attracts like, so whatever energy it's like water attracts its level. So right. you might say, Oh my God, this is, this is great. I'm not lonely. I'm in a pandemic. I'm meeting someone. And just to put this out there to everybody out there in the chat room, I know some of you, you know, there's people who talk to me every, you know, on the weekends, during the week, I have clients here. I'm not talking about anyone in particular. I know that people are like, oh my God, Marissa is talking about me because it, it probably relates to a lot of people on here. So please, you know, don't think I'm talking about it. It's talking just in general, right? In general, right. I've talked to like, I would say at least 10 people that could come to mind that are going through this right now, that the endings were inevitable. However, they're taking it too quick to the next situation where mm -hmm. the other person has an ending and the individual patterns and cycles of energy need to change before they can evolve to that next level. They're actually meeting people on the middle levels, which like I said, don't exist anymore. And if two people are in transition. It's like, boom, what are you going to do when you have to figure out who this person is? Cause I don't think, I think people are kind of like right now just looking to get out of a loneliness 
a loneliness thing. Oh, I and they're look, looking to just connect. And, and we have this urge to like be together with people right now. And this doesn't just apply to just um, people that are leaving relationships. It's people that are in relationships that are evolving where their old selves don't exist anymore. And now they're having to meet on a new energy and kind of re-meet each other and build a new relationship. So it could even be with your spouse or your significant other. That could right. also happen. So yeah, um, we need to talk to Nora about clearing because if people are leaving situations behind and starting a new life, like you might be starting a whole new career. I was actually talking to somebody at the business center the other day mm -hmm. and they said the current trend with this Harvard study that's going on is that people aren't just ending their careers. They're actually changing. This is like a time where the trend is people are just like changing their lives, finding out who they are in this pandemic and actually going into whole new careers. And that's at least what I think is going to happen with you. I don't think you're going to be going into, I, I think you're going back. I think you're going back into this field. If I have to like give you a, a little bit of a heave ho here. I'm in for it. Listen, I mean, five months religiously putting out resumes and I'm sure there are a lot of people out here, not a one. And the ones that they call, they're the uh, recruiters for these um, contract agencies and they get your information and they meet their quota. You never hear from them again. I swear to God. <laughs> exactly. Look you at know? Paula Humphreys here. Look at this comment. Hi, She's got a doodle from keeping her being, well, do you talk about a cheese doodle? What, what kind of doodle? <laughs> what do you do? What is this a doodle? Is this, is this a dog? You got a doodle. Are you drawing? I'm a little confused here, Paula. Do you see she's a doodle? I put it on the screen there. Did you see it? Yeah. Yeah, but she has a doodle. She what do you think that means? Maybe it's a delay. It might be a delay. I don't know, but she's got doodling going on. Hmm. So we have to bring on this. I, I can't wait for Nora. I, I am just, I'm having, I'm having, I'm having this urge to just bring her on. I need to tell everybody about her. Okay. So Nora, she owns Pathways to Inner Healing. We talked about that in the beginning in Moscow, Pennsylvania, a wellness empowerment healing center offering many healing modalities and many classes and workshops. You got to check it out on her Facebook, Pathways to Inner Healing. Nora has been working in the alternative healing field since 1973. And she still looks like she's young enough to go to the pool hall and rack them up and put all those guys down in there. And, and, and just chug a 24 pack all together. She's, she's that cool. She's that hot. She's that amazing. She's going to kill me. <laughs> she's going to kill me. She's starting with reflexology and mastering many energy modalities. I'm so excited to bring her on. I know you guys are excited too. Let's bring her to the show. Warm welcome, Nora Riley. How are you, Nora? What's going on? Oh, I oh, muted your wow. mic. You're, you're, you're unmuted. What do you think of that intro, huh? <laughs> I'm there for a while. <laughs> so, can you hear me okay? So, how are you? We can I'm hear good. you, but we just Thank lost you. Elise. So, I think the spirits in our oh, house no. took her out. So, we have uh -oh. to, we, she'll, she'll be back. She'll be back. So, it's just you and me. Okay, Stuck. Paula told us that she has a golden doodle dog. A golden doodle. I don't even know what that is. is. That a golden retriever? What's a golden doodle? I don't know. So Nora, I know you're backstage listening to all of these transitions and I know that you deal. I deal Listen with the information about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You deal with the energy. So like, what is, what are you experiencing right now? I'm, I'm experiencing peace and joy. Um, but why I take time for myself, you know, I believe that before all of this happened, we were all scattered. We, we were living our life on full speed ahead. And I always tell people, if you don't take time or if you don't do what is needed for your soul and your growth, then the universe brings it and presents it to you. So I believe what has happened has been a great awakening to make people more aware that they need to come back to themselves. Um, you know, we've been programmed to do do for other people. Um, ancestral line has made us believe we're not good enough and not worthy enough. And it's 
selfish to take care of ourselves. My uppermost belief is people need to start grounding their energy, coming back to themselves and um, being out in nature. So I have I have had the chance um, and it's been a great chance to be still and go within. Uh, and I believe the only way that we can stay centered and grounded is within. We, we can't be out here in the world listening to all the chaos. We need to be grounded, um, spend that time to release. Like when you were talking about relationships, people going into one relationship to another, if they don't fill themselves first, then they go into a relationship and they look at the next person to fill them. And that can't happen. We have to fill us. We have to, you know, make ourselves whole before we can expect someone else to do that for us. Yeah, we have a, we have a comment here. Stephanie, she says, I've started using an online dating app, but considering deleting my account, I met a bunch of weirdos in the process. Haven't met anyone in person, but I don't feel like I would get anywhere with those who have been interested in me. It seems like what we were talking about, it seems like with this energy that a lot of people aren't of high energy. They're either, like I said, they're working on themselves or they're looking for low energy. It's looking for instant gratification of like getting out of that loneliness and just looking for that satisfaction of being with someone. And they're not, I don't think a lot of, especially, I hate to say it, the females are being a little more selective, uh, but the males are looking to to um, attach very quickly right now. The men, the male energies are looking because they, I don't know, for some reason I'm getting that the male energies are looking for quicker attachment and they're actually trying to move relationships along a lot quicker. So the women, I know this is very uh, tempting because you're probably getting a lot of attention but realize like you have to get to know someone before you like jump in and get involved. Now, what about the people Nora that like have been talking or, you know, like you have one divorce person, another divorce person, they're talking and they're connecting and then they get together, but they know each other for a long time. What are the odds of those things working if they're not cleared properly from those past, the other dimension, like the other old dimension and we're shifting into the new dimension how could those relationships like really withstand it? Well, they're bringing all the garbage, all the experiences, everything that has happened of dysfunction with them in their energy field into a whole new relationship. So right away, it's being overshadowed. You know, if, if somebody's bringing in fear or anger or resentment, the other person's going to trigger that in them. And I always, I always tell people, you're a mirror to each other. And the darkness within is shadowed and comes up um, by just another person. So, yeah. And what's a good way for people to like, if they really want to work on themselves and try to make these new relationships work, but they have all this baggage from the old relationship and they didn't really give the new one time. What's the best way for them to clear so that they can actually give this a chance. So I would, I would suggest that there's so many emotions that's brought in from old relationships, such as the threat, the guilt, the distrust, um, to sit down and see where their old relationships were and the emotion that's being held within them and start just knowing that all thoughts are nothing but energy. Um, people are like garbage pails. They take the lid off and they just stuff all the emotions and feelings and the dysfunction in. People tell you to get over it, but nobody ever tells you how. If they would realize that all emotions is a frequency or a vibration, and they would start working with, I surrender and release distrust or I surrender and release fear or resentment that I had because of, even if they wrote it down and they wrote it down and real heart and asked their heart, what am I feeling here? Writing it down, surrendering and releasing it, burning it, cutting the cord, sending it off and breathing in love. You know, because I always tell people it's like a murky mud puddle. If you have a mud puddle and it doesn't have an, 
water flowing in or water flowing out, it stays the same. It's the same thing with our emotions. If we don't clear them, we bring on more of the same resonance frequency. So if a person is having anger, they've had they're going to bring in another person that also has anger to help to clear that so they need to go within and say really what am i feeling here surrender it release it you know and bring in the whole new energy of self-love yeah i think that's a really good point and i think too you're talking about triggers and i think that if like let's say you were betrayed in your past relationship in some way whether you were neglected somebody cheated um, somebody really sparked your anger in some way, or you were disrespected and you get kind of like in a disagreement with the new person, those triggers are going to be a hundred or 200% magnified. And you're going to be reacting, almost projecting onto that person, what you're still angry about the person in the past. Like you're not just all of a sudden, just cause you left that relationship doesn't mean that all of your like triggers are gone. And this person, I think people are looking for that person to actually fill that, that void of that pain body, that, that wounded child that's within them that they keep cycling with. They're looking for that. Oh, well, this feels good. So this person's going to clear all my problems that I've had in the past. If I just get the right person and I just get the right plug and put it into the right socket, everything's going to go away and I'm going to be able to have a successful relationship. And that's not, necessarily true right i agree no. no when i'm sorry go ahead when a person is looking at someone else to fill their fill their emptiness they're always going to be disappointed because someone else can't fill that emptiness they have to go within themselves and and bring that and, and fulfillment within them first yeah. And, and it's kind of like, I think people know that, but they just don't want to take the risk of losing that person that they're interested in for their own process. And they don't want to like, they're like, oh, well, if I delay this because I have to work on myself, I'm going to lose this person. I'm going to lose this person who, you know, is interested in me that I have a connection with. What do you do with that fear? Because if you go and don't get into that relationship, what if you're like, well, what if, you know, what if like, I don't ever see that person again? I mean, I'm sure people kind of go through those fears. Communication. A lot of people, you know, shut that communication down and, and hide their emotions inside and, and let other people feel everything's okay. So, you know, one of the things I would say is open up the throat chakra and be honest, you know, express what's going on within you to that other person. And they should let go of the fear of losing that person because if they lose the person, I would flag and, you know, they're only going to have heartbreak again. Yeah. And I, I tend to tell people, like, if you're trying to pace the relationship and that person's not willing to wait for you and they're impatient, then it's probably like showing you who that person is, that, that they just want that instant gratification um, an immediate connection. And I want to get back to Stephanie here. Um, she's like, I'm not looking for immediate attachment. I'm content with being single, but no, I don't want to be forever. I think Stephanie, like as I'm tuning into you, cause I was tuning into you before, um, into your energy. And I actually feel like you're very clear. And I actually feel like you are one of those people who kind of dove into the pool. Like we talked about, moved to the other side and you're actually in the new dimension. You're the new vibration and you're looking to connect with someone that's of the same vibration. The fact that you realize this and you got off the dating site shows me that you're recognizing that the dating site is probably filled with people of low vibration and low energy. And I personally feel like people have to be aware of this. I feel like 89, 80 to 90% of it right now, this month, it's going to be people who want to attach. So I think Stephanie, that you're in the right place, but I just don't necessarily feel that you are going to meet somebody that way. Um, I'm getting a feeling very strongly about that, that um, the fact that you shut that down, it means that your intuition is clear and that you know that the timing's off and that you're going to meet somebody who's good for you. But I feel it's going to be in person. I don't know where or when, 
but that's what's coming to me because I don't hear your voice or see your face. So it's harder to get that. But I feel like you're in the right place and you're doing the right thing if that helps you at all. So let's see what else we have uh, going on here. Are you uh, are you feeling anything about her, Elise, about, about Stephanie? Well, okay, so I pulled the Queen of Swords. Okay. This and is for Stephanie. It. All right. And um, this is for Stephanie. Um, just as Marissa said, you got to follow your gut, listen to your intuition when it comes to people. Um, you, you don't need anybody. Um, the fact that you, you basically learned who you are and that's what that column means for me it usually means going to school, but this is more about learning about yourself and what your needs are. So it's pretty much, um, a round circle around you. Um, you are protective of your, your emotions, but once you meet this person, it's going to be an instant click. Um, I'm with Marissa. I don't know when this is going to be. Um, but you just have to take it in your hands and go forward with what you need in your life. Don't sabotage relationships though. Cause I know a lot of people will go into a relationship and find like two things. They up. I don't like them. Oh, this, that sometimes you have to get to know the person just like you've gotten to know yourself. So just trust your inner, your inner thoughts and, you know, and what you need in your life. But yeah, Stephanie you'll, seems clear, right? She seems to be clear. Yeah, energy. No, definitely. Um, yeah. It's just, she's encasing herself in that protection because she just doesn't want to deal with it, which is, that's perfectly fine. That's um, phenomenal. Most people wouldn't do that. Most people would just go with the weirdos because they're lonely. Exactly. And she's in a good spot. Like she's yeah. in control of what she wants to happen in her life. And that's the first step. You know, um, she's not a wishy-washy person at all. She's very straightforward. She shoots from the hip. Um, but that she does have, like, when she meets somebody, I, I feel she has that inclination to, like, figure them out in like 15 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. I get that from her too. She's very discerning. So um, I I'm happy she's found herself. I mean, that's really great. Yeah. And there's uh, a name, but I don't feel this name is connected yet, but mm -hmm. the name Dennis or Den uh, Dennis is coming to me or like Den Denny or Dennis, but just, it doesn't mm -hmm. mean that has to be the guy's name, but there right. could be somebody connecting with her, but I don't know. I get a caution around a Dennis though. So, mm -hmm. Maybe he's a dentist. Maybe I'm getting that oh, wrong. Maybe he's a that's dentist. That's what I need. I need a dentist. Why? Either that or a contractor. As far as like, <laughs> I got, I got, I got I'm gonna put, be put out there. if I'm going to put myself out there, it's going to be practical. <laughs> so you're saying you want a contractor because they're hot or because you well, want them to like paint the house and like sh sh show their butt? I want it all. She <laughs> better make all. her list. She better make <laughs> So wait, what Speaking now? Why do you want to stop? Like, what? Why do you want a contractor? Is it just purely for selfish reasons to like redo your house? I was just lightening up the mood a little. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Like, um, don't worry about it. I was just, I was making a joke. I know. I, I find it interesting. I, I enjoy. I'm I'm entertained, and when I'm entertained, I want to know more. Okay, so um, <laughs> please entertain me more. Well, I yes, think you really do. I think. You, I think you're, I think you're telling the truth. That's the thing. I feel you're telling right. the truth. I don't think right. you're just saying, oh, I want a fireman because I want them to go put out my fire. I don't think you're just saying that. Right. No, not at all. I'm just saying like it's practicality for me. And I feel like Stephanie is, you know, she's very practical about what she's looking for. So for <laughs> me, you know, the manifestation, like you make your list. So yeah, you make your list. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you know, you get to a certain point in your life, and you're like, you know what? I'm not going to settle for a pretty boy. You know, he has Why to have not? some back. Well, you can, but you know, you need that substance behind them too. Like, at least for me, at least they can fix your toilet and they're hot. Exactly. A plumber would be yeah. good too. Oh wait, Polly B has something to say. Polly B one one two three. I know this is a man because he's on Twitter. Ladies, this is his advice. I love the fact that the men are on the show. Ladies, Michael. look for men that are capable of thinking beyond themselves. Otherwise, their thoughts end with their penis. What does that mean? Their thoughts end with their penis. Like they're just thinking about a penis. Like, what do you mean about that? Let me let me know about that. But yes, look for men that are no. capable of thinking beyond themselves. Polly, you want to come on the air with us and have a little <laughs> chat? I'll send you the link to get backstage. You just let me know because very I think the lady, I want to hear about these thoughts ending with the penis please 
Uh, Stephanie says substance is everything. So I'm glad she's, I'm glad she's up there. I, I have great. to commend Stephanie because she's one of the women who are doing the right thing here by saying, I know these people are weirdos, but I don't need, I don't need to do this right now. Congrats, Stephanie. You go girl. Michael Ruff is still here from last Hi, week. Good teeth and good, good house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael Ruff of South Jersey Smiles, and he is a dentist. So oh. he is a dentist, but he's not anymore. So he can't be the dentist that Stephanie's meeting because he's no longer a dentist. Okay, you know, I have so. to break it up once in a while. Sorry. <laughs> wait, wait. Did you say you had two? You had two careers that you were like thinking about for the men. A contractor. What? What was the other one? Um, what was I thinking? I don't even remember now. I don't. Oh, oh dentist and a contractor. So, okay. Well, yeah, if there's anyone out there as a dentist or contractor, please call Elise. Please have her number. What's the number one thing you're looking for, Elise? Because you've been like single for a while. So what's the Long number time. one thing you're looking years. for? Yeah, um, 16 years. There's cobwebs up in that attic. We got to get hey, them out. Please. Listen, I left enough time. Um, I just need someone who's honest. And isn't going to play games. I mean, that's basically it. And good again, a good sense of humor. They have to be kind of good looking. Um, likes to dance, slow dance. That's like my main thing. Like slow dancing. I'm hooked. Slow dancing. What oh, about yeah. like to dirty dance? Like the like the movie Dirty, dirty Dancing. Dance. Like I had the time of my life. No, I can't do that. What song is? What song do you envision this fantasy going on with? Um, the way you look tonight by Frank Sinatra. I love that song. Oh, oh baby, that's <laughs> good. To go down a little. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I I just sense about Elise right now. I sense that she's a little frisky, and I have known her for a very long time, and I haven't seen this like this Mamacita side to you. Like don't I, I all change at one point. Like don't you, like. You're talking about people doing work. I've done a lot of work on myself the last year, even yeah. before this COVID crap. And I just put things in like relevance, like where I want to be, what I want, who I want, you know, what's most important to me. And I, I've, I've really cleared all that gunk that was behind yeah. me when, like when we first met. So but yeah, you know, I'm ready, but. But I don't want you on the time. chat rooms. What's that? Yeah, you're going to have to run the new man or anybody you're dating with the psychic friends, with Nora, energy. You got to run us everything by us before you get involved. I know. I will. Yeah, I wish I did. Well, I did. I ran everything Everything I did in the past. I ran by everybody. I still didn't listen to anybody. So I guess it doesn't matter until you're ready. <laughs> well, no, that's, that's fair. You know, you have to be ready to do just like you have to be ready to lose 200 pounds you have to be ready <laughs> to get, 200 well, pounds it's that's a it. mindset. like people it's psychological it really yeah. it goes into yeah. your you know down to your core like that's you gotta like break out of it. it's a lot of psychological work and it's a lot of i feel it's a lot of psychological work when you're cleaning out the garbage that's been thrown at you all all your life basically and i think you have to get, break that cycle and break the circles that are going on in your head. And sometimes um, sometimes you're attracted to people that you shouldn't be attracted to. So not the bad boys, but the characteristics and it carries over. So until you're ready to block that and not be attracted to that type of person, male or female, um, you know, I don't see you progressing as far as relationships. Yeah, you do, know? You, do, you, do you see the comments coming up on the screen, no. at least? Oh, oh do you see him, Nora? I see Kelly Nicole grinding. <laughs> no, Angela Julia is up there. She says, "Thanks, oh, oh, girl." on the bottom. I'm sorry. Hold on. For the guidance since last August, the porch in the lounge. She's been watching. Okay. Angela Julia, I'm getting this. I'm getting some feelings for you, girlfriend. You are just a sweetheart. Okay, Aww. but I feel like I feel so sad when I'm tuning into your energy. Like, like I don't know. I just feel like there's so much sadness uh, like you've been through so much and i feel like if you're getting into that pain right now and you're feeling that grieving that's coming out i feel like you're too, you're like so sensitive that like the emotions are just so strong with you right now and it almost seems like very overwhelming and i just want to tell you to push through but that by october you're going to feel so much better 
But I, I just feel like, man, you are such a good person and you've been through so much. What's really weird is I also see a baby around you. I don't know if you just had one or one's coming, but I'm seeing, I'm seeing a baby. I don't know where this is coming from, but I just want to tell you that you have all this angelic frequency around you and you have all this support and I'm going to have, I'm going to have the least pull a card for you because I feel like you need to need this. What's that going on? Tell us the least. So I would say by the end of this year, um, whatever's been bothering you, it, it's going to come full circle for you, but yeah. you're not looking, she's not listening to the signs. Like, I feel like things are coming at her. She's not really focusing around like where there might be help or, you know, handling her finance. I'm feeling finances too on this one. Um, but by the end of the year, I don't know if there's going to be, um, what was I going to say? I'm so sorry. I just feel like she's not listening uh, and the support she has that Maris is talking about. Um, it's not like it's like she's pushed it away. She's not listening to whatever it is she should be doing. Um, I, I, I honestly, it feels like somebody's playing games with her too. There's someone yeah. around her. There's I get pain. a lot of jealousy. I get a lot of jealousy yeah. around her and that people know she's a good person. And I feel like she's beautiful. She's got so much mm -hmm. going for her. But people, allowing her. Yeah, but there's people around her that are trying to like almost Still make her thunder. believe. Yeah, like make her believe like she's not all that in a bag of chips, but she is. So this card right here, um, it's basically people around you not allowing you to express yourself, be who you are, um, or you're afraid to be yourself around these people. This is a toxic situation. Um, they're actually the where the pentacle is being held by the page it's actually he's pulling it away from you so whatever opportunities that you should be doing they're either talking you out of it you're they're making you double think your decisions and uh, it's not really a fruitful relationship whoever this person is because i feel there's one individual that's doing this to her marissa and i but i feel like it's a friend yeah, I'm but like a toxic, like somebody in her circle that like she goes to for advice or she goes to when there, she's having an issue with a, a, a person or a romantic connection. And I feel like they're almost, you know, how some people give advice and they're jealous of you and it's almost like to put you in the wrong direction. It's just like, like that's oh, what yeah. I'm feeling. Yeah. Giving her all the info, not giving her all the info, so like, like pulling it away from her. That's you know what, what Nora? Like. I want to ask you, Nora, too. I'm sorry. Did did I cut you off, Elise? Did no, you have no, more to say? Ahead. Okay. Um, Nora, like, how does somebody who is like this good person and is attracting all these draining vampire people who are like jealous of them and taking from them, and they they're leaving them with that gray aura, that gray energy, leaving them with all their bad energy and taking the good energy and leaving them depleted? How does she get away from some of these people? <clears throat> I would have to say, if I talk to her, I would have to ask her, like, why is she attracting this type of person? Um, I also feel that a lot of times what you attract is something in your past, a childhood, maybe memory or something that is making her feel maybe subconsciously, unconsciously not worthy or not good enough. Wow. Yeah, yeah I just, I feel like she, I feel like people haven't told her how great she is in life. Like the way she grew up or whatever. I feel yeah, like she I, hasn't people been told. Feel yeah, yeah, I feel bad. Like, yeah. So Angela is saying that she saw me in Princeton in 2012. I showed up late, late, at least tracked me down to get to the entry fee. <laughs> Well, thanks for coming. I guess you met both of us back in 2012. So I'd say baby then also. I still feel a baby in spirit wanting to come through. So I think you just got to, we're tuning into you very strongly. And uh, Nora has said she these these beliefs stem back all the way back to your core wounds, what you dealt with in life. So we really want your healing for you, Angela. And um we can give you the insight, but you have to realize that. Um, uh, let's see. Oh, what she says. She said it's recovery month. A lot of her lovers have passed away. 
So she has a lot of people, I'm assuming, that had addiction issues that she was with. Um, it looks that way to me. Um, so that comes with a lot of, that's a whole other discussion with that energy. Because people with the addiction contract, they kind of could self-will themselves out of here or stay here and raise consciousness beyond what normal people can do. So that's a lot of energy. And if people pass of addiction before it's their time to go, they will attach to earthbound people. They will attach to people that are still living and pull from them so that they can actually feel what it's like to actually be in a physical body again. So that's kind of dangerous. How do you clear that, Nora? I'm sorry. I was reading. I wasn't listening to you. I was reading the post over here. Say that oh, again. That's okay. People, people that date a lot of people who have addiction issues and then these people pass of addiction issues. And then the person's left with all these, this pain. Like how do you, how do you clear that? Oh, uh, they're um, energetically attached um, because when two energy fields come together, they connect the things that if I was working with a person, I would have them cut the cords to all the dysfunction that happened between them and release it and let it go and then breathe in um, love. You know, it's, it's hard to get over grief. Uh, it's a lot of heart work, a lot of opening the heart and realizing, you know, that they have to fill them. Um, my, my major thing when I work with people is bringing them back to their heart and their soul, back to that energy within them and become stronger. Um, then they become more empowered. Like people give their power away to other people and then they become powerless. So even in a situation, if people would just just stop and take a breath and ask to bring all the power back that they have given to other people, bring it back to them, cleaned, cleansed, raised in vibration, bringing it back as empowerment, it brings parts of themselves back. Yeah, and if you're attracting people that have addiction it's issues, like there's a when we. Oh, go ahead, Nora. I'm sorry, I just lost your audio, so I thought you were done. But go ahead. No, I just said when when we lose people, part of our energy goes with them, and it's like a soul retrieval, bringing your energy back from that person. Yeah, and if that person's in spirit, and they pass to the addiction contract, they could still be pulling from pulling yes. from you to get the power of your energy so that they can manifest and stay longer on the earth plane, which isn't good for you. And it's not good for them, but there's a reason why you keep attracting addicts or alcoholics that are not in recovery or they're still out there. Um, there's probably some codependence issues that you're dealing with. Um, it takes a long time to heal, but it is possible, but really you have to believe that you're, that you're awesome. And so that's what we're here to tell you. Um, Cindy Ramos says, ladies, you're awesome to come on and do this. It's so helpful at this time. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for saying that to us. Oh, We're so trying nice. to give as best as we can. Uh, Joanne has a question. Um, Joanne says, talking about toxic people, should a mother totally cut the cords to her son or should she give him one last chance? I don't know how to answer this one, Nora. Mm -hmm. I would, I would say that she has to go and set the intention to disconnect any dysfunctional cords that have been attached to her from her son. I like to plug it in the universal healing ray of light because when people attach to us, they suck our energy. But, but when we release it and we put a ray of healing, then the healing is going into that person. I would say she needs to cut the dysfunctional cords, but she needs to keep the cord from her heart of love streaming to him to keep sending him love and to see him healed and whole. Just keep, keep filling him with love, seeing him how she wants him to be. Yeah, and I feel like with Joanne too, and I'll have Elise pull a card on this, but I'm getting a sense, Joanne, that there's a lot of underlying anger and resentment you have toward your son 
and you don't want to feel that way. <laughs> Who does, right? Who does want to feel that way about their child? So I feel like you put that down almost like, I don't want to feel this. I don't want to feel this. I don't want to feel this. But yet your boundaries aren't being respected and you just want respect. And it's like, for some reason, he's playing out a certain cycle, which you are powerless over that cycle. Like you can't single-handedly stop that cycle. He's got to actually like what we were talking about with, um, with Angela prior. Um, he's got to really do the work himself and, and take it upon himself to really want a different pathway. And you're seeing it clear as day, but I also feel like there was a lot of personal pain that you felt from your son. And it's hard to get past that. It's hard to really like, he's your son. So you want to forgive and you've forgiven probably 300,000 times, but you're, you're hitting your limits and you're hitting your wall. And the only way to um, actually move through this, I feel is surrender to victory. Um, fighting to try to get victory right now is not going to get you anywhere. And I know surrender sounds like giving up, but it's actually where your power is at this time. It's surrender to victory. It's he's got to feel your release, but it can't be a release with anger because he's going to feel that energy too. He's going to feel that energy of like being pushed away or you being angry and, and giving out that energy it's got to be a fully surrender to let him as he's his own spirit, even though you're his mom in this life, he's his own spirit that came down, chose you as his mom to do the work he's come here to do and his mission to complete. You got to ask your spirit guides and the people on the other side to try to get him. And you have to realize that he's got to complete this mission. Like this is his mission. It's probably to complete this cycle in his lifetime. And he's got to do it on his own. Um, but for you, it's releasing that, really deep. I feel it's deep rooted anger and so hard when it's against somebody you love so much, but that's what you have to work on is realize that um, you are doing the best you can. And the best thing you could do is stop in any form of control whatsoever. You know, even if it's in your mind, <laughs> Elise, what are you getting? Um, well, it's ironic because I picked out the first card was the Knight of cups. And for me, this is usually vic victory, but this is a struggle for me right now with this card and mostly for uh, Joanne. Um, you may not see it, but the mouse is in the, in the, the weeds below him. And all you can really do is be there and wait there. I don't feel any kind of interaction, whether you're going to, you know, pull away from him totally or try to help him. Um, he has to do this himself. Uh, it's almost like, you're, you, you, he's blind. He's definitely blinded because he. De I don't think he knows how to do this himself. Um, professional help would be best. If um, one second, it's almost like he he pulls the shades over your eyes in in the past. Um, I'm not feeling medic. Somehow I'm feeling there's medication involved with this too. So I don't think it's just alcohol. Marissa, I'm feeling like there might be other substances he may have, may have taken in the past or he's taking in the meantime right now. Um, so that, that's something I would be a little concerned with. I feel something with trust with money or finances with mom. I'm getting something, something with money or something like she doesn't trust him when it comes to I don't know if she's giving him money. I'm not sure what's going on. It's hard to tell um, what's going on with Joanne because like we don't hear her voice. Her. Yeah, I'm getting like a haze over her cards. I've never had that happen to me where like it looks like there's a happy ending, but there isn't. Like I just, what I see in the cards is actually the opposite. It's it's weird right now. Um, yeah, like it's not the time where it's going to resolve yet. Right. Because I'm not seeing it resolved right now. Yeah. But I feel she has to surrender. I don't know why. I'm just getting the feeling she has to let go. And that's so hard. Well, I feel he's going to be mostly all about himself because I pulled the devil card. So I feel mm -hmm. like it's, it's all about him. Nobody understands. How can you leave me? He's going to pull the guilt trip. She shouldn't like fall into it. 
Like, I really feel he's going to, like, make it difficult for her to pull those strings away from him emotionally. Yeah, well, apparently he doesn't speak to her. So I don't know what the, what the, um, I don't know what the circumstances are, but Joanne, like, I feel like you could physically get ill for the, the amount of energy that you're holding. Um, so you have to try to release that just for yourself and to put love out there so that, um, I know Joanne, you're saying you have let go, but I don't feel that. I mean, you may have let go mentally, but I feel like all of that trauma is still in your body and that's what I'm picking up and I can't change how I'm feeling about that. Um, it feels to me like there's still some releasing that you have to do. And, you know, I, I can't change how I feel um, or what I'm picking up. But yes, I am feeling with him, there is some, that gray matter, there's some darkness. And, um, but for you, there there is even, like I said, that that anger, that resentment is very deep and it's so hard as a mom to feel that. And that's why I feel like it's down in there. Maybe you're not even aware that it's subconscious. I don't even know, but I, I do feel that because I'm looking in your energy field and it's very like gray. So that's what we, that's what we have right now. Like I said, it's hard. We're, we're trying to do this when we can't even hear you or see you. So yeah. just take what you can and see how it applies. Um, I want to get to Sarah because I was picking up her energy. Um, thank you for doing what you're doing. Any help you can give me on having a lot of mental health issues and having a hard time. Um, Sarah, this is, and I, you guys all know me that are on here. I'm not just on here to make anybody feel better. And I, if you're mad at me, that's fine. If you don't, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm here to tell you the truth. And be, because I want you to get to a higher vibration because I want what's good for all of you. Um, but Sarah, I feel like you're in one of those cycles we're talking about. And a lot of this is energetic. I know you're talking about mental health issues. A lot of it's energetic and there is some work to do for you that you have to do because I feel like there's some people too with you that are holding you back. So, you know, at least you want to pick a card on that. Um, I did. Um, I picked the hermit for her. Um, Sarah, I really feel like you, you feeling that you're in this only by yourself. You, you do have other people that are around you, but you're not seeing the full picture. You're not per looking at the peripheral and you're not, you're just looking straight on. Um, I just, I, I have to pull another card for her because this That's okay. isn't. Yeah, I just feel like she's in those cycles that we were talking about before. The, the people that did the growth work, I still feel like she's still like, I see like a, you know, a dryer where it's still going around and around and around. And I want to get Sarah out of this yeah. because I, see her I going feel like she's a sabotage, sabotage. Yeah. Like, I just yeah. feel like she can't, it's almost like fear of success, fear, fear of failure. But somebody in her earlier life, when she was younger, I feel like, there was some sort of critical authority figure or somebody who did not give her, you know, that love. Is that, is that what's coming up for you? Yeah. Uh, the ten of swords, um, this stuff she can break away from, but she can't cause it's so embedded in her psyche. Um, and it's like 10, I'm feeling like, a, like 10 years ago, there was like a, an issue that came up that it's just been something she has been able to break. Um, There, there's definitely one person though around her that isn't like leaving her side. I feel like a female, so more of a mother figure that's coming around for her that's tried to help her, but she's allowing this heaviness just to weigh in on her. And she's not really looking outside and trying to break free of that cycle that you're talking about. Yeah, she's you're right in it, Sarah. And I don't want to see you yeah. continuing that into the new energy. You have to break this cycle. And I feel like you are in control of it. You are in control. And I know you say you have a lot of mental health issues and I believe you, and I'm not saying you don't, but I feel like a lot more is in your power than you think, because I feel like there's a lot of this that's familiar to you and that you've lived with your whole life. And I feel like 
Yeah, look, Sarah Sarah is validating what you're saying, Elise, that she oh, stopped no. talking to her mom 11 years ago. So there are mother issues there. Okay. So, okay. you know, there's just, I just feel like somebody was very critical of her and um, didn't give her the right messages about herself. Right. And it's, it, it's usually when we do these cycles, it's subconscious. So it's not like anybody is being like, She's not, you're not wrong, Sarah, but you are in this cycle because you're keeping yourself in this cycle and it has to end before I would say before January of 2021, it's got to end. And you have to be the one to say, you know what? I'm done living, living these toxic cycles where I feel good. And then I feel bad and a very roller coaster of emotion that you go through. It feels like you're one of those like blow up clowns that somebody punches you, you land on, the, <laughs> you land on the floor, you come back up and then you get hit again with something and it's just the energy that's that's constantly you're familiar with and that feels like home to you it just feels like what you're familiar with and that's why we get into those cycles but i just want to tell you because i'm i'm being honest that i don't like the cycle that you're in or the energy that i'm feeling that's been consuming you especially over the past six years i feel like that's that's a chunk of time that i'm picking up and the number 23 so that could be the 23rd of a month or two three february 3rd but you have to get, you have to get working on this. Okay. Because I want to see you get out of this. You have every possibility to get out of that. And she's validating too. Yes. Always. I get so stuck. I'm telling you, I don't want you to think that this is something that you have no control over because that's, what's keeping you there is that you think you don't have any control over it. you you think you get stuck and you think it's almost like a, a universal sick joke. Okay. But it's, 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 it's just the cycle of a core wound that's going on with you and um, you're in control of this. So you have to start with your thoughts and your thinking and start to almost write down the negative thoughts you're having throughout the day and then read them back at night and see how many negative thoughts are going through your mind about your own self-talk. Like you might think positively and talk positive, positively on the outside, but what you're telling yourself on the inside is what's manifesting. So the subconscious thoughts that you're having and the voice that you're, you're telling yourself. So she's saying, yeah, I feel like I can't fight anymore. This is good. That means you're done. That means you're done with the cycle. And that means you're done because fighting the wave when the high tide comes, you know, you're not going to win against the wave. You got to learn how to ride it. And it's time to let go of the voices that spoke for you. And that's, what's coming to me directly. It's time to let go of the voices that spoke for you. So when you have decisions in your life, are you making those decisions or are those voices that told you how to live life making those decisions? Really important to think about that. Lise, do you have anything else? Um, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I don't. I don't. Nora, anything for anything for um, Sarah? Nora, do you have anything for Sarah? I think she needs to say many times a day, I love myself. I love my myself to feel self-love. You know, and it's an affirmation and she's setting the energy of loving herself. When you love yourself, then you don't let other people take advantage of you. Yeah, it's, I think it's just she can't find success in her life because she feels like she gets stuck through these stuck points of energy. It feels like she's only maintaining that level of existence and not really feeling joy so much. Um, so she could benefit from your energy work, I think, Nora. She could benefit from you giving her like some people need energy work. Angela, you're one of them, you know, definitely Angela, you need some help with that. Um, Sarah, I feel like you would, if there was anything I would recommend for you right now, it's sometimes we have so much energy that's layered on us that we have to release that layer by layer by layer. And we can't do it by thinking our way out of it. And, and two, um, Joanne that we were talking about earlier, She's got so much stuff that has built up inside of her, those layers 
with the relationship with her son that those layers have to be released one at a time. Because if you try to release everything and stop these cycles all at once, your body, your mind, your spirit can't handle it. You have to actually release in layers. And Sarah, like you just have too much, like, like Nora was talking about that mud on you. You just have too much mud. And so you need somebody else to help clear that so you can start moving forward. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So I hope Elise is okay. I don't know where Elise went. She's coughing. I know. Elise, are you okay? Well, Sarah, I'll just wait for Elise to come back. But Sarah, uh, She's saying, thank you. It helps. I can understand where it's coming from. I'm ready for a new me. So I'm glad she was able to kind of connect to that and um, move it ahead. So at least are you all right? I'm good. Okay, good. I didn't know if a spirit was like starting to, you know, <coughs> how are you or I'm what sorry. happened? <laughs> it's okay. I couldn't find the mute button. Sorry about that, everyone. That's okay. I just thought you were okay. I'm good. I'm sorry. So, So yeah, I'm just trying to see who else is here. Let's see. Um, I'm just reading some of the comments. I thank everybody for asking us questions and being brave enough to hear what we have to say. It might not make sense to you right away or it may make sense to you, but we're tuning into something on a deeper level. This isn't just like predictions, future stuff moving forward, or even people that passed it. We're looking into your levels of energy that are inside your body and inside your subconscious tonight. This is all about healing and moving forward into the new energy. And so there's a lot of times that we're not even aware of some of the things that Elise, me, or Nora are picking up about you. So just, just try to process that. And hopefully, you know, we're just trying to try to give messages this way. It's a little bit harder, but um, you know, just try to try to, try to make sense of that. But I, uh, I didn't even realize it was already already past the hour. Gosh. So it went by fast. We didn't expect to be given messages tonight, but we did. We hope we helped everybody. We thank Nora for coming on. She did such a great job. Nora, did you, are you happy you came? Yes. Thank you for inviting me. Of course. We'd love to have you back on anytime. And let me just put a little banner up there for you, Nora. I'm gonna create a little banner. So this is how you find Nora. Do you have a, a website or Facebook? Um, Facebook. I, I have a Facebook page, Nora M. Toy Riley, and I also have the Pathways to Inner Healing. All right. So this is, this is Nora. This is right, right? Pathways to Inner Healing on uh -huh. Facebook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So just put that into your search bar and you will find Nora. Give her page a like. And um, we're so happy to have all of you here. And like I said, we don't ever know what the lounge is going to bring. The lounge books itself every week. You don't know. Who's going to be week. No idea. But we didn't even know what we were doing when we first signed on. And here we are giving people messages. So I hope you guys had a great time. And I hope that you're going to come see us for the office, the porch, and the lounge next week. Thank you so much. Thank you. And hope. Bye. Thanks, Nora. Thanks, Nora. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Um, thanks, Stephanie, for getting your reading and for tuning in. And I hope everybody that we read tonight gets some healing from what we said. Even if we were a little tough love or we gave you some honest insight, it's all out of love. And we hope that you guys um, take it and use it into your, your new pathways to inner healing with Nora. All right. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your night. And Nora says goodbye. Elise says goodbye. Bye, guys.